Hi, and welcome to the Vet Dental Show, where we dig deep into everything in general veterinary practice, dentistry, and have fun doing it. Welcome to the Vet Dental Show. I'm Brett Beckman. I'm a board-certified veterinary dentist, and we come to you every week on Wednesday to provide the veterinarian and the technician team some actionable things that you can use in your practice. And this episode is going to be a recorded episode that we've done in the past, not a podcast that we've recorded or not the Vet Dental Show, but actually some other information for you that we know you're going to enjoy. So sit back, enjoy, and we'll see you at the end of the podcast. So when we're looking at criteria for root canal, if uh, one, one is if the pulp is exposed. So if the pulp's exposed, the pulp, the, the pulp cavity is exposed, the pulp chamber is exposed, then that pulp is either dead or dying. And by exposed, I mean you can put an explorer down into that area. And if that's the case, then uh, if the radiographs are okay, and if the tooth has no significant periodontal disease, then we can do a root canal on that tooth. And we do root canals if you have a lucency in some cases. If it's a case that it's uh, the, the common maxillary fourth premolar that gets fractured from chewing hard things, where the apex is dramatically affected and or there is a fistula under the eye, I don't recommend root canal. But <clears throat> some specialists might. I don't do it because I want the patient to be pain-free immediately and not have to undergo additional inflammation while, while that, uh, since the pulp's out, while that uh, area of inflammation infection clears, I want to get in there and clean it out after I extract the tooth. So that's why I don't recommend that. Some people might, but I don't recommend that if it's severe. So that's one, one scenario. The other scenario would be a tooth that's, that has any other radiographic changes that suggest it's dead. Um, you could have a, a tooth that died when the patient was a year of age and the patient's four now and it's got a large pulp cavity. As long as the root tip is still intact on that tooth and there's no severe changes around the bone at the root tip, that still could be a candidate for a root canal. And you pretty much always want to ask the owner if, if that is something that is um, in, of interest to them, if there's a possibility of saving a tooth. And if you don't, it could come back and get you if the owner is not given that option and they find out later that they could have had that option. Um, that, certainly doesn't happen very often to my knowledge, but it could and I'm sure it has. So keep that in mind. Those are the, there's not a lot of, of times when we can't, absolutely can't. Uh, it, if there is a fracture uh, under the gum or under the marginal bone level that's, that's a vertical fracture, then those can't be, can't be saved. If they are um, if, if it is a, uh, a situation where the root tip is destroyed, and um, that happens a lot when the pulp's been exposed for quite some time or the tooth's been dead for quite some time, and the byproducts of pulp necrosis or bacteria or both have caused the root tip to be resorbed, then those are not candidates for root canals unless we do uh, surgical root canals, which I generally don't recommend uh, for the patient because it's a, it's a lot of uh, involvement for the patient and those are not um, 100% uh, or, or uh, near 100%. Uh, root canal, 95% chance as long as there's no changes around the root tip that are significant, uh, that it's going to be fine going forward. And Christina asked if it are all Discolored teeth non-vital? Uh, no. And uh, yeah, so uh, if, if it's an intrinsically stained tooth, then that means that the tooth is either dead or dying uh, <clears throat> or has chronic pulpitis. 
And since we don't know if our patients with chronic pulpitis are uncomfortable or not, as sometimes they are or aren't in humans, uh, we, we would recommend uh, root canal or extraction in that 7% that have that. And that, that's data from Fraser Hale that did a study in Canada where he took patients that had intrinsically stained teeth and he did root canals on them and on the teeth that weren't dead, he took the pulp and he sent that in for histopath. All of that pulp was diseased in the 7% that weren't grossly uh, diseased. And by grossly diseased, I mean the pulp uh, was either fibrotic or the pulp cavity was full of black soup, which we get quite a bit with, with uh, teeth. So um, any of those changes that would suggest that the tooth is, is dead uh, fall into that 93% uh, category where 93% of teeth with intrinsic staining are dead, the other 7% are dying or need uh, or have chronic pulpitis and all of 100% of those need uh, either extraction or root canal. And again, this is a time when you want to suggest root canal of a client because um, it's kind of hard to sell a root canal or an extraction on a tooth that's, that grossly is normal. Uh, and I would suggest you let them see the x-rays and let them see the changes and let them know what happens if that tooth is left, even though it's not showing x-ray changes yet, it will very likely do so uh, in almost every instance and it will be uh, painful or discomforting to the patient off and on uh, throughout the time that that tooth is, is left in the mouth or does not have a root canal. So I hope that answered your question. Uh, if owners are unable to refer for a new ca root canal is extraction uh, or continued monitoring the best, best step. Um, Amanda, if we're, if, we're res if we're talking about a dead tooth or if we're talking about a tooth that has changes that suggest it's dead radiographically or otherwise, then um, Yes, extraction is the is the only step if the owners do not want to do a root canal. Uh, Megan, good question. We do canines on cats. There are no other teeth that I've done root canals on. I don't see any reason why we would, um, because most of the time there's never a fracture of any tooth in a cat other than a canine tooth unless it's from tooth resorption. So you, you're not going to see cats fracturing their fourth premolar and first molar because they don't chew on hard things for the most part. Maybe in the wild uh, they did uh, when, they, when they ate uh, prey, but not in uh, our domestic cats. Michelle, if for those teeth where um, it looks radiographically okay, is it appropriate to monitor if there's just a little indent in uh, the probe? In other words, you can't get it further into the canal. Um, yes, yes, and that, that is the case. And there, there are like those the, those teeth that we saw in that case where they were black, um, and there was some indentation. I'm not sure if I mentioned this there, but if it looks like that, and there's some indicate or there's some indentation, and it's that dark dark color, um, in in our experience over the years, those are almost always non-vital. Um, <clears throat> So take that into consideration when you're looking. But then again, you saw that case in the same case where we had that big lucency and you had the dark discoloration and then you had a lot of teeth, uh, or all four of those canines were really bad. And then you had the first molar that, that looked fairly normal. And then you had the first molar that had the big lucency on the mesial root. So you can't, you can't be 100% sure on, on any of those. You always want to radiograph first. Uh, but those black ones usually are radiographically just a mess, uh, like those four that I showed you. For feline clients, Carol, uh, that refer extraction of mandibular canine when a maxillary canine is removed, do you monitor the lip? Um, one observation that we've had as a group with our mastermind group, which is kind of the precursor of the veterinary dental practitioner program, is that when when we extract those those uh, canine teeth, uh, the the maxillary canine teeth, the any any problem with that 
bottom canine entrapping the lip is usually transient. There may be an indentation there, and there may be uh, uh, irritation, there may be a lesion there, but usually at the recheck in two to three weeks, that lesion uh, resolves. And we don't check our patients back for routine uh, treatment or extraction. So what we do is what Dr. Jody Reed suggested and we've adopted over the years is to take and do a little adenoplasty and remove the tip on that mandibular canine and not get into the pulp canal, but just round it off, make it smooth, and then bond that with a bonding agent. Now, again, you guys don't have bonding agent for the most part in general practice, so that's not something that you would be <clears throat> that you would be doing uh, in your practice. But monitoring it to get the patient back in uh, in a week, if there's significant changes there, uh, you probably want to extract. But I would not extract. Uh, just right off because there's a good possibility that that's not going to be an issue long term for the patient. But it's good to it's good to head it off and and do the preventive maintenance with the adenoplasty and bonding if you have it if you have that capability. I hope you enjoyed this episode. There's a lot of actionable items in there that you can take and use in your practice immediately. So put those to work and enjoy the benefits for the practice lifetime in your dentistry service. And if you would, please go to iTunes, leave a rating and review, take a picture of that with your cell phone, and then post it on the Vet Dental Show Facebook page. Just go to Facebook, search Vet Dental Show in the search in the upper left, and the show will come up. And once you post that, we'll send you a free instrument use essentials course. So if you want that free course, again, all you have to do is go to iTunes, leave a rating and review, take a picture of the rating and review with your phone, and then post it on our Facebook page, The Vet Dental Show. So until next week, have a great week. Take care, guys. Hi, and welcome to The Vet Dental Show where we dig deep into everything in general veterinary practice, dentistry, and have fun doing it. In the weekly Vet Dental Show, be prepared for timely topics, off-topic rants, special interviews, and anything in between. I'm Brett Beckman. I am a board-certified veterinary dentist, and I've been teaching dentistry for over 20 years to veterinarians and technicians in general practice to help them be the best that they can be for their patients. Join me on a journey each week, every Wednesday, for 10 to 30 minutes of fun and information to help unpack the myths, keep you up to date, and improve your knowledge and skills to make your patients and their parents love you even more. That's all for today. Join me next Wednesday for the Vet Dental Show. And don't forget, go out and make it a great week.